The onslaught of Deputy President Shigadi is now headed to its final stages. And the primary reason for me deducing this is the fact that cabinet secretaries like Aden Duale are now ramping up the bombardment of Gashagwa's quarters. This is the second time in less than four days that Waziri Aden Duale has shelled the kingpin of Mulima, or Murima if you will. Just listening to this. You cannot take an oath of office as the president, as the deputy president, as a cabinet minister like me, as a principal secretary, as the head of a security agent, the IG, the DG NIS, the chief of defense forces, and then use your office to perpetuate, to propagate sectarian and tribal interests. You cannot have the choice. You must live by the oath of office. The president takes an oath of office, whether those who voted for him or who didn't vote for him, that oath of office obligates all of us that you must serve the people of Kenya, you must speak for the people of Kenya, you must be ahead the interests of the people of Kenya. Now in line with that, I would like to answer a question that one of you sent me. And uh, I don't have my phone with me, so I'll just paraphrase. He wanted to know, in the event that D.P. Rigathi is removed from office through the act of impeachment, what precedent will this set in the grand scheme of Kenyan politics? So that's what I want us to look into in this particular video. And without wasting any time, let's get after it. Number one, the removal of the deputy president from office will solidify the split of Mlima Kenya East and Mlima Kenya West, especially if Mlima Kenya East MPs overwhelmingly vote for the removal of D.P. Rigadi Gashagwa from office and Professor Kiture Kindiki is selected as the new deputy president because automatically Mlima Kenya West will uh, be looking to revenge in 2027 and they'll do so by voting for the opposition and in so doing solidifying the rift that is kind of now starting to emerge. And by the way, this comes as a very big shock to all of us. Can you imagine? Let's just take the clock back. In 2022, nobody, and I mean nobody, could ever have anticipated that one day, one time, we'll be talking about Mlima Kenya East and Mlima Kenya West. Not even the mountaineers themselves saw that coming. If you listen to the political analysis of the time, people like uh, Mutai Nguni was talking about the Gema community, the Gema community, Lima Queenie, same thing. All the pundits, all the analysts, they're talking about the Gema community. But now the politics has evolved. We are talking about East and West. This is a new frontier that we are entering. So nonetheless, an impeachment of Rigadi Gashagwa would lead to a very big rift in those two regions. I don't know which politician will come one day, one time to mend that rift. It could be Jesus himself, who isn't even a politician, is a superior deity. Now moving on, the second thing that would happen if DP Rigadi is removed from office is that it will set the precedent for future impeachment or purging, if you will, at the highest level of governorship, i.e. the office of the deputy president. Because if you do the math, since we abandoned the 2010 constitution, we've never had any president or deputy president facing an impeachment trial, let alone being removed from office by the National Assembly. Because, you know, it's a demeaning process. Rigadi would have to appear before Speaker Wetangula in an ad hoc committee, and the ranking members of that committee are likely going to be the likes of Kimani Ishungwa and Junet Mohammed. So imagine somebody like Ishungwa organizing the ouster of Dipi Rigadi, and then Dipi Rigadi has to go explain himself before Ishungwa. <laughs> that would be an outrage and uh, as you know it would have to be televised on tv now assuming they have their way and they remove him from office the pandora's box will be opened and in future more deputy presidents will face the axe for even lesser crimes than loving one's region too much now the third thing you can expect following uh, regardless impeachment if at all it ever gets there is that we are going to have organic mandamano that will disrupt all businesses in Nairobi and Kiambu County in specific. A little while back, we were told by Opio Wandai that the finance bill was a ticking time bomb. No one believed him until Gen Z went to eat rice in parliament and they stole the mess. This time around, a Rigadi Gashago impeachment will also have far-reaching consequences in regards to protests. My only hope, of course, is that they don't, you know, get out of hand and uh, we end up flipping the newspapers or turning on the TV and seeing that Nairobi is being declared a hotbed of terror by CNN. But Maandamano, you can definitely expect it. Because for Rigadi, it's, he's in a very unique spot. If you count the leaders who support him, they don't even exceed eight. There are very few elected leaders from the mountain as we speak. All the others are behind Kimani Ishungwa because he's their majority leader. 
you know he's with them every other day he's able to solicit their votes and to lobby you know but all the people on the ground from Lima Kenya are solidly behind Rigathi Gashagwa even in Lima Kenya East where MP Roku is leading a rebellion that standpoint is not 100% with the people yet they are kind of now marinating in it if they can continue selling and sell it well they will have the backing of the people but still even in Lima Kenya East Rigathi has at least half of the support of that region so maandamano will be very bad and it's not worth it better we wait for 2027 those who want to remove him can remove him in fact it won't be removing it will be reassessing and selecting somebody else it won't be a case as it would be if it happened now now the fourth thing you can expect following a rigathi gashagwa ouster is that mlima kenya is going to be a very hostile ground when politics comes around especially the politics of 2027 because all those who supported his impeachment and all those who appeared not to even try to stop his impeachment will not have it easy they won't be getting out of their v8s to greet kenyans and itakuwa kimeumana it will be very very difficult the ground itakuwa vile ilikuwa before so for me my assessment is that it is better off those who don't like uh, dipirigadi or would like to see him gone 3 years is not too long in 3 years the president can select professor kindiki he can select mudavadi he can select morara even david wafula as the next deputy president if he so wishes the options are all there and the timing will be just right but right now it involves impeachment and the process of removing a deputy president is quite different from a minister a cabinet secretary is just fired with one stroke of a pen a letter is publicized on twitter at midnight people don't even have time to protest but for a deputy president it will take some several days of the ad hoc committee and the speaker listening to the facts listening to the lawyers of the deputy president and and whoever brought the impeachment motion will also be bringing his or her lawyers so it will be a long dragging case and that really brings up the emotions of the country so i wouldn't go that route personally but at the end of the day that's just my opinion do let me know your own comments in the comment section below do you support an impeachment motion against the deputy president or do you think we should hold off uh, for the right time in 2027 whereby if somebody wants to replace him they have all the time and uh mandate to do so do drop me your comments i'll do my best to read them and to give you a response and in the event you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for david ofula hit the subscribe but you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adiós.